it seems like seconds are running slower before the launch. Hundreds of people are electrified. Zenith launch vehicle is standing still waiting. Years of hard work are left behind, and here is the launch. Land launch program, the first launch. Zenit's development started in 1976 at the Yuzhna Design Office named after academician Mikhail Yangel. Originally, the rocket was supposed to be a component for Buran reusable rocket space transport system. Way back in the 1980s, Zenit was considered for manned missions. Two metal towers standing above the ground, which were called birdhouses due to their appearance, belong to that age. The birdhouses, which were supposed to be used for cosmonauts, boarding are still near the pad. Exactly this environment-friendly vehicle was intended for the deliver of cosmonauts to the International Space Station. The flight test commenced on April 12, 1985, a day to remember for all cosmonauts. It was the time when the construction of assembly and test building and this launch pad began. In December 1987, the vehicle was commissioned. It took eight years to create a brand new engine for Zenit. It became the most powerful one around. This engine was used in non-expandable Energia Buran launcher. We aim to bring all the advanced technologies taken from all industries to this launch system. Rocket technology, space industry accumulates all the best we had up to the moment of creation of this system. The Zenit launch vehicle's lead manufacturer is Yuzhny Machine Building Production Association in Dnepropetrovsk, Ukraine. Even though the vehicle is Ukrainian in origin, in fact, it's a joint Russian-Ukrainian project. More than half of subcontractors are Russian companies. The main idea is to save the launch vehicle for the future. For both Russia and Ukraine, we never divide it here. March 27, 1999 was the first time in space exploration history that a spacecraft was launched from the Odyssey sea-based platform. From this moment on, it was the beginning of the immense international sea launch program, which brings the United States together with Russia, Ukraine and Norway. It has been very successfully launching large communication satellites from the Pacific Ocean for the last nine years. Sea launch was an unbelievable success. Within the framework of this program, we launch various satellites up to five tons or more from waters of the Pacific Ocean. In addition, launching on the equator uh, uh, is a way to launch this very heavy rocket with complete safety to all uh, unrelated persons. Uh, you're, there's no ships, no planes, no cities, no, no people anywhere around. So. And because the ocean is, uh, there's no islands or any, any land downrange, there's no need to design the mission uh, with any uh, drop zone constraints for the stages. And of course, it should be mentioned that uh, the Zenit and the Black DM both employ environmentally friendly propellants, so there's no damage of any kind to the marine environment. When launched from the equator, Zenit launch vehicles provide injections into the prescribed orbits for heavy satellites with a high accuracy. This allows the vehicle to be the one of the best at the world's launch services market. In 2002, considering a tough competition in development of medium-class geostationary satellites suitable to be launched from the Baikonur, Sea Launch became very active in establishing legal and financial issues of land launch program. By that time, these activities were carried out under the auspices of Roscosmos. Also, to support activities on behalf of all Russian and Ukrainian program participants and interface with Sea Launch company and launch services customers, a joint venture, Space International Services, was founded. 
Компания Международные космические услуги была создана. Space International Services as a company was founded in 1999 at an initiative of three companies, Yuzhne Design Office, the designer of Zenit Complex, Yuzhne Machine Building Plant, the Zenit Manufacturer, and Design Bureau of Transport Machinery, designer and operational organization of land infrastructure. Nowadays, SIS operatively resolves all issues related to land launch. What we have is some kind of a return of Zenit vehicles in their advanced and upgraded appearance from sea launch to the Central Asian desert, back on the ground where Zenit complex is located. Now it's an international program involving Russia, Ukraine and Kazakhstan. Everyone has its own task. For instance, the first stage main engine is developed and manufactured in Russia. The second stage main engine is developed in Russia, but manufactured in Ukraine at Yuzhmash facility. The upper stage is developed and manufactured in Russia. The widest partnership. The most significant work has been done on the ground segment upgrades. It was fully replaced. Baikonur launch site is the cradle of Zenit. It's the place where its first launch took place. Originally, Zenit was a two-stage vehicle. It injected scientific and military purpose satellites in space. It became a three-stage vehicle on sea launch, though. Now, an absolutely new upgraded Zenit 3 SLB is back to its original belonging. Sea launch, and it's the perfect launch vehicle for launching medium sized satellites uh, to geosynchronous or geostationary orbit. A contract with an Israeli company on the commercial launch under land launch program was executed on November 17, 2005. By the end of the year, the integrated tests of all equipment in assembly and test building and launch complex have been completed. On June 29, 2007, a successful launch of Zenit M launch vehicle and Cosmos series spacecraft took place. It was a unique marriage between the two-stage and three-stage launcher that was manufactured in a single pattern. This successful launch became an important milestone on the way to the finalization of Zenit M launch complex. There are not many vehicles capable of inserting a spacecraft into a geostationary orbit. One should have a powerful vehicle, and Zenit is just the ticket. On March 18, 2008, the Amos-3 Israeli telecommunications satellite was delivered to Baikonur's Yubileyne airfield using Volga Dnieper aircraft. Amos-3 is the third satellite in the series of the communication satellite. Amos-1, Amos-2 and Amos-3. The first Amos series spacecraft was launched an Ariane 4 vehicle from Kourou spaceport in French Guyana. Amos-2 was launched from the Russian launch site in 2003. It was decided that the third Amos would also be launched from Baikonur. 